Hello, beautiful internet family. My name is Dan Davis, and I'm the creative director here at danstube.tv, as well as the Fearless Drone Academy, which is the ultimate online drone course for beginners. And if you are a beginner and you're looking to get the most out of your drone, then definitely check out the Fearless Drone Academy. It's really got everything you need to know as a beginner. You can use the code danstube to save some money over there when you're actually purchasing the course. So definitely check it out or send it on to a friend if you know someone who is a beginner and is a little bit anxious about flying. But in today's video, I've got the ultimate comparison between the two latest mini drones from DJI. This is the Mini 3 Pro versus the Mini 3. When we look at these two drones on face value, they do look very similar. Like if you were to look at them from a distance, you really wouldn't be able to tell much of a difference. There are some subtle design tweaks here or changes going on uh, that actually allow for the Mini 3 Pro to have three-way obstacle avoidance. But looking at it from a distance, and especially looking at the camera systems themselves, they do look pretty much identical, but there are some limitations that DJI have put in place uh, for the Mini 3, and that's where the Mini 3 Pro definitely stands out here. We'll go through a lot of the different features and what makes these two drones different because there are some clear differences here. So let's talk about price straight up because that's one of the biggest factors that's gonna determine which drone you're gonna get for a lot of people out there. Now with the Mini 3 Pro, I do have the Mini 3 Pro Dan's Tube Combo Plus. This is $1,459. I'll have a link in the description to check it out, but it gets you the Mini 3 Pro, it gets you the standard controller and three batteries, and two of those batteries are the plus batteries, which give you even more flight time. And there are also a few other accessories in that combo. So definitely check that out if you are in the market for the Mini 3 Pro. This is the standard controller that you get with that combo. It's a great controller and it does everything you'll need, but you can also get yourself the DJI RC, which is this controller here. And it works on both the Mini 3 and the Mini 3 Pro, but the combo I've got included below in the description includes this controller here. And now if you are interested in the Mini 3, you can get yourself the Mini 3 Fly More Combo Plus. This is going to set you back $1,188. Again, it comes with the drone, the three batteries, two of them being the plus batteries and this controller here. You can get both of these drones on the D1 Stores website. So if you do wanna get yourself the Mini 3, for example, you can send the D1 Store an email over at sales at d1store.com.au. Mention Dan's Tube and you'll get yourself a really awesome saving. So whatever you're looking for, send them an email and they can definitely help you out. But if you are looking for the Mini 3 Pro, then you can check that link in the description to actually check out the exclusive combo for my subscribers. Really killer combo for the Mini 3 Pro. But again, if you do want to mix and match, maybe add a few things, uh, definitely send an email to sales at d1store.com.au and see what they can do for you as well with the Mini 3 Pro. Moving on to the first thing here, which is the camera system. Now this is one of the big selling points of the Mini 3 Pro. It's got a phenomenal camera system on it. And the thing that's really cool is the Mini 3, which is a slightly cheaper drone, actually has pretty much the same camera system. There are some limitations here where the Mini 3 Pro stands out, but both camera systems are one over 1.3 inch CMOS sensors, and the aperture is fixed at 1.7, which really does allow some amazing low light shots on both of these drones. When we look a little closer into the Mini 3 Pro, we'll find out that it's actually 4K up to 60 frames per second, where if we look at the Mini 3, it's capped out at 4K up to 30 frames per second. Both of these drones though are capable of capturing HDR video and photo, and with video, they can actually capture up to 30 frames per second with the HDR option. So both of them do have a lot of power and both camera systems are great. There are definitely some subtle little differences here, which was very interesting for me to to actually research and look into a little deeper. So with the Mini 3 Pro, the max bit rate that this guy can capture is up to 150 megabits per second, where the Mini 3 can only capture up to 100 megabits per second. So very interesting, a subtle little thing you might not have known about, but the Mini 3 Pro takes the edge here if you're looking for that extra bit rate. I'm really happy that with the Mini 3, they've actually still included the digital zoom. Sometimes what happens is with the cheaper drones, they remove some of those features that the higher end drones get. 
but I love it that they've kept digital zoom for us on the Mini 3. So if you're going to record 4K video, you can go up to two times zoom. And if you're gonna record full HD, which is 1080p, you can go up to four times zoom. So that's both on the Mini 3 and the Mini 3 Pro, but I'll get into a little later in this video some of the things that aren't available on the Mini 3 but are on the Mini 3 Pro. The next two things that I'll mention are exclusive to the Mini 3 Pro. So again, very interesting that certain things have been culled or removed from the Mini 3. And the first thing we wanna talk about here is the slow motion option. So on the Mini 3 Pro, you can capture full HD video up to 120 frames per second. So that's 1080p up to 120 frames per second. The Mini 3 does not have any slow-mo options. So you cannot capture slow-mo if you're looking at the Mini 3. It is one of the limitations of it. Might not be for everyone though. And the other thing is the color profiles that are available. So on the Mini 3, you've only got the normal color profile, which for pretty much all use case scenarios, you're gonna be happy with normal color profile. It's great, does an awesome job. But on this guy here, on the Mini 3 Pro, you can actually get the D-Cine like, which is more of a flatter profile that gives you a lot more detail and more information. So then when you go and edit the videos, you can then get a lot more out of the image. When we talk about design decisions here, this is actually something very interesting because with the Mini 3 Pro, it actually has three-way obstacle avoidance, which I'll get into a little later, but that means that there are sensors on the back here as well as on the front as well as below the drone so on the mini 3 it doesn't have obstacle avoidance so that means that they don't have to obviously add the sensors on the back here or below and with that what they've actually done is they've just created like little air intakes almost here which is going to cool down the internals so they're just little grills basically on the front where we look at the mini 3 pro and it's got the big sensors where the grills are on the mini 3 so that's one subtle change there which is i guess a, a functional change something that actually makes a big difference to a lot of people the other thing though which was very interesting to me the mini 3 has these little legs here so it actually has little legs that prop it up a little bit more. Now it's only a slight difference, but if you really care about like the clearance of when you're gonna land and take off and you're maybe worried about the drone's camera sitting in the grass or dirt or whatever it may be, firstly, get yourself a landing pad. But secondly, this guy here actually does angle down slightly more than the Mini 3. So the Mini 3 Pro looks down a little bit more than the Mini 3. So I actually really like that you get a bit more clearance on the Mini 3. It's nothing major, it's a very subtle thing. But again, that's another design decision. Uh, that's interesting to see. I wonder whether that was a weight limitation. I don't know why the legs are on the Mini 3, but they're not on the Mini 3 Pro, but just keep that in mind. Let's move on to the photography elements of both of these drones. So one of the biggest selling points for a lot of people out there is going to be the 48 megapixel stills that you can capture on the Mini 3 Pro. Now with the Mini 3, you can capture 12 megapixel stills, which is what we've seen on the Mini 2 as well as the Mini SE and the Mavic Mini. So that 12 megapixel rating is the same here on the Mini 3, but because it's got a, a larger sensor, because it's got um, you know a, a larger ability to actually capture light due to the aperture, then this guy's actually gonna stand out over the previous drones that I mentioned before. I have a full comparison on the channel very soon, um, but the camera on this, like the, the photo quality and uh, the ability to capture light is gonna be better on the Mini 3 as opposed to the cheaper Mini 2 and Mini SE but on the Mini 3 Pro, it can capture up to 48 megapixel stills. So that could be a really big calling card for a lot of people. Having that extra information, that extra data is gonna make a big difference if photography is a big thing to you. So keep that in mind, 48 megapixel stills on the Mini 3 Pro, um, but still both of them do a great job and they capture some awesome photos. So it really does depend. Again, you've got to ask yourself, what your needs are, if you actually care about photography, how seriously you're taking your drone purchase. It all comes down to what you're actually gonna do with your drone, and that's kind of how you're gonna make your decision. Both drones can capture raw images as well, so it's not like the Mini 3 can't capture raw images. So that's nice to see that we've got raw on both the Mini 3 Pro and the Mini 3. The other thing to mention, which was a subtle thing that you had to actually dive through the specs and have a look through the information on uh, DJI's website to find this. But when we're talking about ISO, the Mini 3 Pro can actually go up to 6400 ISO, where the Mini 3 can only go up to 3200. 
So again, keep that in mind, depending on your needs, that could be another reason why the Mini 3 Pro stands out for you. Now let's talk about battery life. On both the Mini 3 Pro and the Mini 3, they have phenomenal battery life. They also have the same battery system. So that means that they are interchangeable batteries. You can smack this in the Mini 3, or you can take it out and put it straight into the Mini 3 Pro. It's gonna work regardless of what system you have. And that's the same with the plus batteries as well as the standard batteries. On the Mini 3 Pro, you can either get 34 minutes of flight time if you have the standard battery, or you can get 47 minutes of flight time with the plus battery. Keep in mind that with the plus battery, it's gonna take the drone over 250 grams. If you have the standard battery, it will be 249 grams. So again, that depends on the regulations in your country for flying. It depends on the rules and laws and all of those things things, but if you're looking for that plus battery and weight isn't a problem maybe in your country or you are a commercial drone pilot, then you can actually get 47 minutes of flight time with the plus battery on the Mini 3 Pro. But on the Mini 3, again, it's the same thing here, the same battery technology and same system. You can get yourself a plus battery, which will actually take you up to 51 minutes of flight time. Or if you want the standard battery, which is this guy here, it actually has text right down the bottom that says ultralight 249 grams. So this battery weighs a little less and it gives you 38 minutes of flight time. So 38 minutes is great, 51 minutes is insane. But again, depends on rules and regulations and the laws in your country. But just keep that in mind, the Mini 3, due to the fact it doesn't have the additional sensors, actually can get more flight time for you. You're only getting a few more minutes and realistically it's maybe only like two more minutes potentially, but still, a really cool thing that could be a selling point for you if you're looking for something like that. Both the Mini 3 Pro and the Mini 3 have the exact same wind resistance rating. So they can handle up to 10.7 meter per second winds. Now, the amount of people that comment on my video is going, what is meter per second? Why are you saying meters per second? Well, that actually converts to 38.52 kilometers per hour. I've actually flown both of these drones in winds. The wind was, I think, like 32 but the gusts were 35, 36 kilometers per hour. Both drones handled it phenomenally well. They didn't even look like they were struggling. So in terms of wind rating, they both have the same wind rating and they can both handle high winds. One of the biggest selling cards of the Mini 3 Pro and probably one of the main reasons why you would want this drone over the Mini 3 is the fact that it has three-way obstacle avoidance. So it has obstacle avoidance facing to the front, to the rear, and also downwards. So front, back, and down obstacle avoidance. That's three-way obstacle avoidance, and it does a fantastic job. Honestly, I've done some really cool tests on the channel, and it can handle really anything you put it at, even like a dense area with trees everywhere. It can navigate really well in a dense area. With this, you get a pass 4.0, so it means it can avoid lots of obstacles, and it can continue tracking you. It doesn't just stop, it can bypass and continue to track you, whether you're on a bike, in a boat, in a car, Whatever you're doing, this guy is gonna be able to track you and you do get different modes. So you've got the focus track 2.0, which gives you a bunch of different features. You get the active track mode, you get the point of interest and you also get spotlight. Three really cool, unique modes that you just do not get at all on the Mini 3. You also don't get any obstacle avoidance on the Mini 3. So that right there could be a reason why you would get the Mini 3 Pro over the Mini 3. It's a couple of hundred dollars more if you get the combo that I mentioned at the beginning. And the Mini 3 Pro is gonna give you extra features, more options, and it's also going to give you a bunch of different tracking and obstacle avoidance features. So the Mini 3 Pro really stands out there. The Mini 3 just doesn't have anything like that. So really impressive. And it's not like it's a terrible version. You know, like there are higher end drones out there like the Mavic 3 or even the Air 2S. But in terms of how well the Mini 3 Pro handles obstacle avoidance, it does a fantastic job. The tracking's great and I've had no issues with it at all. Let's talk about the range and the OcuSync technology that's gone into both of these drones. So when we look at the Mini 3 Pro, right, which is the one that's the higher end option, it does have OcuSync 3. So it's got the more advanced OcuSync as opposed to OcuSync 2 on the Mini 3. So let's say, for example, you have this controller, regardless of which drone you have, the Mini 3 Pro can actually go up to 12 kilometers away from you. Uh, depends on the country, depends on what model of drone you've got. Also, you cannot fly that far away legally, so make sure it's in line of sight. But 12 kilometers is the rating that they've got on the website for the Mini 3 Pro, and the Mini 3 can go 10 kilometers, but it's got OcuSync 2, and it's also got less antennas. So that means that 
the Mini 3 Pro definitely takes the cake here. In terms of the video feed that you're getting to your phone, so depending if you have the RC Pro, which is this controller here with the built-in screen, um, it's going to be the same though, regardless of which controller you have. But let's say you've got your phone in this little controller here. If you've got the Mini 3 Pro, you're gonna get 1080p, 30 frame per second, live feed video to your phone, as opposed to 720p at 30 frames per second on the Mini 3. So with the Mini 3 Pro, you're getting a more clear image, uh, like higher quality image where you can see those details a little better on your phone, especially when you're using a small screen, that actually makes a big difference when you're out in the field. Another thing that the Mini 3 Pro has over the Mini 3 is it has master shots mode. This seems to be like a pro offering that's available on like the Air 2S and the Mavic 3 series, but it's not available here on the Mini 3. So again, just a software limitation to make the Mini 3 Pro stand out a little bit more over the Mini 3. Master Shots is a very cool mode, but it's not for everyone, and you definitely don't need it for every scenario, and not every person's gonna care for it. But just keep that in mind, Mini 3 Pro has the Master Shots mode. The other thing to mention is that they both have the same Quick Shot modes. So they've got Droney, they've got Helix, they've got all of those same modes. There's no new mode here on the Mini 3 Pro. They've both got the same quick shot modes. And then another really cool feature, which is available on both the Mini 3 Pro and the Mini 3, and this is unique to this series here, this mini series, it is the vertical video options. So that means that you can press a button and the camera will flip to its vertical mode, meaning that you can capture videos and photos in that vertical mode, which means you can upload TikToks and you know Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts and all that kind of stuff directly from the drone without having to edit it and crop it in. So that is a really cool feature that's available on both drones, but do keep in mind that with this guy here, with the Mini 3 Pro, because it's got the tracking modes, it means that you can actually use those tracking modes when you're in vertical video mode. So again, it always depends on what your needs are, but let's say for example, you're really into mountain biking. You're probably gonna struggle with the Mini 3 because it's not gonna be able to track you, but with the Mini 3 Pro, you can put it into vertical video mode, you can get it to track you through a little foresty area, and then you can upload that directly onto your social networks without having to edit anything. So in that situation, the Mini 3 Pro does stand out because a lot of the features are available through that vertical video mode. Whew. All right, so that is everything I could find online through the spec sheet, through all of my tests. I really tried to break down everything that's unique and similar about these two drones. They both do have their place in the market. If you do want to save a little bit of money and get a little bit more flight time, the Mini 3 is great. Maybe in your situation, you don't care for tracking. Like that's just not what you want to do. You want to get lots of landscape photos and videos. Then the Mini 3 pretty much does everything you need. It's a fantastic camera, really reliable in the air and just awesome in all situations. But if tracking is important to you, if master shots are important to you, if you really care about having sensors that can avoid obstacles, then you have to get yourself the Mini 3 Pro. It's a couple of hundred dollars more and it's gonna get you a lot more. And it really is one of the best drones on the market, even for its small size, it still is my favorite drone at the moment, something I fly all the time. Uh, that's not discrediting the Mini 3, because again, it's got a lot of things that you need, it's a great drone, but just those extra features on the Mini 3 Pro definitely stand out. And I think if you can justify that extra amount of money, you can get yourself this combo, which includes uh, a bunch of other accessories as well as you know the batteries and controller and drone. It gives you some extra accessories as well. So it could be a really good combo to get yourself, especially if you have like a larger drone and you want a smaller drone in your kit, or maybe you have got a smaller mini and you want to upgrade. I would say if you've got like a mini two, for example, the Mini 3 is quite a nice upgrade, but you're lacking some of those features like the obstacle avoidance and the active track and the master shots and the 48 megapixel sensor that you get on the Mini 3 Pro. So I think honestly, I would say save a bit more money or try to you know hold out for the Mini 3 Pro because I think it's worth the extra money and um, yeah, there's not enough unique offering on the Mini 3 to make it like a standout thing besides those few extra minutes of flight time. But I think you should just get yourself the Mini 3 Pro for most people. Um, but that's not saying that the Mini 3 still doesn't have a unique place for a lot of people. So anyway, that's the end of today's video. Thank you so much for all the amazing support throughout the last 12, 13, 14 years, however long I've been doing this for. I think it's like 14 years now I've been making YouTube content. So thank you so much for all the amazing support. I will have some more giveaways soon, more unique content on the channel. Definitely let me know below in the comments if you've got any other video ideas you want me to cover. Uh, I will definitely try to do my best, but I'll chat to you in the next one. Thank you so much and chat to you soon. Peace.